Hello and welcome to another session of Thinking in React. And this time we'll be seeing the local environment setup for Windows operating system. Now, uh, up till now, in all the previous sessions, we have been using Code Sandbox as our primary code editor. And what you uh, didn't realize if you were following along was that much of the, um, let's say, package handling and the nitty gritties that are required for us to bind this entire ecosystem in order to make our React app work was being done behind the scenes by the code sandbox. So if we follow along this um, environment setup for our local machine, we'll see that what all components and what all pieces are required in order to form uh, this entire system in which we can execute our React apps. So, but uh, a word of uh, caution here that or let's say a suggestion here that in the upcoming lessons we'll be doing whatever uh, learning we are gaining we'll be doing that in code sandbox only but in order to make this uh, the knowledge complete for you guys i want to share how to have this setup as in in your local environment as well so if you want to use code sandbox or you want to do it on your local machine that's entirely up to you it's a matter of uh, personal preference and always feel free to modify this course as per your personal choice the only takeaway that i expect you to get from this is the learning that we um, in that we do in our usual discussion so let's see what all steps will be required for us in order to have this local environment set up for us so the number one step that we'll require will be having node in our machine now some of you might have the doubt like why is node required if we are going to have the setup for react so the reason is that we'll be having these packages and we'll be installing some packages in order to make our react code work inside our local machine and in order to do it in order to install those packages we required npm which is node package manager and that's why i want you all to have the stable the latest stable version of node at that time and that you can check by going through this particular url now uh, when you head over to this home page of node.js you will see there are two versions mentioned so this uh, the current version the one that is marked as current it is the one which is the latest rolled out by node.js team but this is not the most stable version it uh, comes bundled with some um, let's say non anticipated bugs and it keeps on improving and that's when uh, this particular version comes into picture this is at the current moment what is the most stable version of node out there so even if you head over you can see that recommended for most users even they recommend for us to use the most stable version that is present as of now this particular one is sometimes used by uh, developers who require some very specific package or very specific new functionality that has been integrated in the newer version so we don't require this we want this particular one version now before doing that what i want you guys to do is head over to command prompt in your system and you have in we'll be first checking what is the current version that we have in our machine in case you have previously installed node before in order to check that you have to type node node dash dash two hyphens like this and version and when you hit enter you will see the current version that your local machine has is 16.14.2 this is for me and you can see this is the one which is the most stable version uh, present as of now now when you see this session there might be the case that this particular stable version has moved ahead and it is of the range of around 17 18 or even 19 20 so always remember to have this particular version matching with whatever version you have in your system in order to download this you just have to click on this and then you'll get one 
downloader here and you'll just have to open this and follow whatever this setup wizard is so since i have the latest most stable version already installed in my system i'll be skipping this part so just follow this um, uh, this installer and we you will be able to install the most latest stable version of node in your machine now that will be step one moving on for the next step we'll be we'll have to choose a code editor for us and for uh, as the most popular one and the one which i will recommend is vs code uh, editor now you might have heard this name a couple of times if you've ever stepped in the world of development so vs code is a free and open source editor uh, which is widely uh, uh, used through, uh, by developers throughout the world now if you want you can choose atom or sublime or any other editor if you want that will not make a single difference in whatever we are doing okay i repeat you can choose in any ad other editor like atom or sublime if you want just for keeping this simple and consistent i am showing you the same uh, method for vs code if you want some other editor you will be able to very easily find the procedure of how to install them onto the internet so in order to install this we have to head over to this codevisualstudio.com and just hit on this version uh, this button download for windows now it will install a setup for you i'm gonna hit cancel here because i already have vs code installed on my system and once you have this you can just open it like this and the home screen you will see it will be something like this or with like you previously saw that that release notes sort of tab opened up the next step that we have to do is you can head over to this website on babel docs slash en slash editors now the intention for this is we want to enable syntax highlighting for our editor now what that syntax highlighting is whenever you are writing any code so all the reserved words that are there all the keywords like import and const and export and default and if and etc and etc so you see that even in code sandbox as we were typing out our code out and we were using these keywords along the line these all were getting highlighted in different colors which is very useful whenever we are coding simply because number one thing is it makes our code much more readable because we are able to associate like uh, we are able to relate that what all keywords are related to each other and it helps a ton while debugging your code because if your code was written in simple monotonous uh, color then it will be very difficult to uh, figure out the difference between what all words are there and which one is a particular keyword which one is an explicitly defined string let's say in some cases so based on your editor you have to scroll down a bit in our case we have visual studio code and here you can see it is saying that we have to install vs code language hyphen babel extension and follow the instructions now if you click over this it will take you to this particular page and this particular extension is created by michael mcdermott and this is the one that we want to install in our vs code so in order to have any extension you have to click click uh, on this last icon right here and you have to search for babel okay let me see what was this javascript so like this this is the one you can see the topmost one you have to click on this I have already installed it in my system that's why it is written disable or uninstall but in your case you'll just have to hit install and this extension will be added on your editor now along with this particular extension of babel i also want to want you guys to install this particular extension which is vs code icons so what it will do is so it will add these icons for you for different files that you create in your project for example an icon for .html extension uh, a different icon for .js for .css so it helps to create 
a very pleasant folder structure and we'll be able to segregate all the files based on their extension and in this case based on their icons so we'll be installing these two extensions number one will be babel javascript and number two will be vs code icons now the third step that we'll be following that we'll have to follow is to create a react app so point number one was to have the most stable version of node installed point number two will be having the code editor which in our case we are following vs code and adding these two extensions in them and point number three is to create a new react app now if we head over to this documentation scroll down a bit you'll see that these three lines are of the of most concern to us so you have to first execute this particular command which says npx create react app and this my app here refers to the name of that particular app that we are going to create now since most of the people think that this might be a typo instead of N npm they've even dropped the note below that this is not a typo it's a package runner tool that's come that uh, comes bundled with npm version of 5.2 and above than that so let's just copy and paste this command directly in our command prompt like this and make sure after you install the, the node make sure to execute this command and cross check the version that is currently installed in your system is matching with the one mentioned in there uh, this website of this so you just have to enter, hit enter and then it will start installing all of the relevant packages in order to proceed just press y and this way we'll have all these relevant packages installed okay all right guys so there was some uh, issue in my system regarding some uh, previous version of react global already installed in the system so that was that was why we were uh, seeing all that warning but going through stack overflow a little bit i've uh, find found out like using this particular command if you are facing that similar warning that i am facing that i was facing just um, seconds before uh, so if you are facing something like the old global version of react is there in your system and it is not matching the current updated version try running this particular command npx clear npx uh, these hyphens and cache so this way most uh, probably that issue will be solved now as discussed the next step will be to copy this particular line and paste it right here and hit enter so i've already uh, done it so i've already installed I, uh, I mean already created one my app in my d drive so if you directly just copy pasted it and um, like this so this will create this my app folder inside this local disk c of yours and we're talking about in the case of windows like users react and there will be another folder of this but in my case i prefer to have all these external um, installs which i can delete later on a separate local disk so let's say if you want to install it on local disk d so what you can do is in order to head over to d you should write d colon hit enter you'll land in low your local disk d then i've created a folder called react there so in order to get inside folders we have to write cd which stands for change directory and if i write react like this so i will get into react folder so this particular path here signifies that there's a react folder inside local disk d and we are currently inside that and here yes i have pasted it hit enter it will take some time like 5 to 10 minutes um, in order to get better results you can restart your system if you want and once it is installed in your system you will have to cd to the folder in which all of these files have been installed and as discussed in our case that folder is named my app so you have to write cd change directory to my hyphen so one more uh, good functionality that some of you might be aware of of cmd is if you don't remember the complete name of the folder or let's say if the name of your folder is very 
long so what you can do is just write the initial words of it for example in this case it is my and hit tab so it will automatically fill out the most uh, matching folder with these particular initials and if you hit enter you'll see that now we are inside my app folder of ours and here it says the step number one was to create a react app called my app we have already created that inside local disk d and a react folder inside that and at the end we want to start it so in order to do it we have to write npm start and hit enter so this way it will start your uh, your react code and you'll be able to see that initial uh, this initial react logo that we see a lot so it might take like one or two minutes so meanwhile what we can do is we can head over to vs code and do a little stuff of ours so in order to get your uh, folder right here you can go head over to file okay so it has started you can see now in on local host 3000 you'll be able to see this uh, icon floating there let me open it in chrome itself like this and let me close this okay you can see that particular logo is now appearing right here now if we get over here in order to open that folder of yours you'll head over to file and open folder now in my case that folder was located in local disk d in react and the folder name was my app so you'll click here and you'll hit select folder so since we have installed that uh, favicon icon extension i believe whatever what that, uh, that was so with the use of it you can see that all of our different uh, file extensions they are assigned an a unique icon of this for example for .js file we have this js for .css we have this css logo and all these things and now you can see the uh, most important and the most uh, heavy folder among these is this node modules ones this uh, we'll, dis we'll discuss more about it in the coming lectures and regarding these you can see that like there's too much clutter in here right that is already pre-installed so what i want you guys to do is just delete all of this and just leave the index.html file apart from that we'll delete every other thing like this and so in the public folder we now only have index.html and inside the src folder we want to keep only the index.js file so we can head over and delete all of these like this and all of this is gone now if we head over to index.html you can see that there's a lot of code right here all right all the comment sections and these meta tags and all so all of this is good uh, having their own unique functionality but most of them will be useful when we actually deploy our app but right now we are just concerned with the basic functionality and we are in the learning state so i would suggest you to just go ahead and remove all of these from here and we will remove this particular part as well and this as well so right here now we just have this div of id root and we'll say that we will have the type of this div to be text okay inside the quotations we'll see the type of this div will be text which means we'll be pointing to this index.js file of ours with the jsx extension and the src will be mentioned as we have to head one folder out first so we'll write dot and colon and then we have to say index.js okay so i think we have to apply dot dot here and then if we say index.js like this and it was located inside src so this way we'll select that the source of this text jsx format will be located inside an, an src folder and that file will be named index.js so nothing new up till here 
we have just modified the HTML file accordingly like we did in our code sandbox and then in here you can remove all of the imports from here just keep the above two the react and react elements and we have to remove this constant from here you can remove all of these comments from here and then what we want is we have imported react dom and then we'll just write react dom dot render something and then we'll say that we have to get that document the id of root and let's say since it's one of our initial code in this local environment we'll just follow the age-old custom of okay sorry like this and we'll write it okay let's keep our h capital and we'll write hello world here like this okay we'll hit save here we'll hit save here as well then we'll try to head over here and we'll reload this localhost 3000 of ours all right let's compiling let's terminate this one then again write npm start so this way we'll again start our react app let's head over to vs code again and in here we have this okay so is something missing in our one this is html and we have a div let's remove the body from here let's keep it so if you head over to index.html file we can see a lot of uh, this cluttered code is written in here and most of these like uh, this link and these meta tags they will be useful once we happen to deploy our application but right now our primary intention is learning so we'll just try to make it as similar to the previous case that we were using as possible so we'll remove these comments as well and then we'll change this to a script tag in which the source is to be mentioned at this index.js so we'll head over to the src folder and in it the index.js file and the type will be mentioned as text with the form of jsx so this way if you hit save now this particular uh, okay this one closing tag missing let me write this out yeah like this so we've added a script tag in here to mention that the functionality of or, or whatever the javascript and the jsx files will be located at this particular source so like this in vs code if you hit control and you hit click on a certain path so it will take you directly to where that particular path was pointing at now and you can always like traverse via this uh, folder structure also in here also let's remove all of these let's change this to react hyphen dom only and react this constant let's remove them all like this and we'll write similar in the similar fashion like we used to something and that should be pointing to get element by id the id of our element will be root and let's follow the age-old custom here by just writing hello world like this and if you hit save so now you can see both of our index.html and our index.js both of these files are now pretty much similar to the way they used to be in code sandbox so let us let we have saved it let's see our react app and if you head over to localhost 3000 and you refresh it you'll be able to see that hello world is being displayed right here so this way you have seen let me change it okay so this way you've seen that we had to do all of this these things like starting from having node and npm installed in our uh, local system to getting a code editor and in our case we have selected vs code for that then we have to 
have all the react dependencies installed in our system creating a react environment then we have to create a react app we have to create another folder in which all of those relevant packages and modules will be installed and then every time you want to uh, make your react application run you have to exit you have to head over to that particular folder your that consists of your react files and you have to type out npm start so you see all of these um, like hectic procedures and you know in most of the cases if you're not following a tutorial you will mess up at some particular point like if you will uh, have a typo in certain uh, command of yours or maybe in some cases like you saw with me previously the the version issue will be there so to avoid all such cases and to just focus on the learning section and since we are all doing very uh, light programming here i prefer to use code sandbox for that purpose so going forward we will be uh, doing all our um, coding part in code sandbox only however i have um, guided you through this uh, setup of this local environment so that if some of uh, if some of you have the personal choice or preference to have all these code in your local environment which is sometimes good also because it will um, make you familiar with all of these local editors and this uh, command line which will be used by you and when you go out and do this coding in the real world scenarios but uh, we'll be following code sandbox only so code sandbox or vs code that's uh, entirely up to you and if you face any difficulty in following all these four steps in order to have this local environment do let me know in the comment section below and that will be all for this uh, particular tutorial and i'll see you in the next one